I'm here uh, on behalf of GDG India, and uh, uh, I'm a Google developer expert in AdMob APIs. So how many of you are, are want to be an Android developer? Ah, so, so, uh, uh, okay, uh, you know, the, the basic thing about uh, development is that uh, you invest a lot of hard work in that and uh, the outcome would be that, okay, why do you want to do this? You want to uh, make a business out of it. Now that's why uh, we have Admo for this, but just just uh, glance of uh, why I'm here. So, uh, this is my business and I'm completely based on advertisement from Google. So the thing is that I have created 14 build apps uh, in the Play Store uh, and in Russia it is used as well. And, uh, this is the name of my company, uh, it's a very small company, Zigzag Interactive. I'm the only person inside, so not a big deal. Uh, I've been in, I've been honored with this uh, expert program uh, for being the top contributor in forums. Uh, I have helped a lot of developers implementing the SDK in their apps, and uh, now I'm doing iOS as well. So this is uh, one of my most popular app, which has been covered by Google on the success story page, on their AdMob website. Uh, this is my app icon, and so it just have uh, 500,000 installs and. Uh, you know, with a with a kind of four star ratings, uh, it gives me a stagnant revenue stream. I mean, uh, the revenue every day is constant. So it's very fine. This is about the GDG India. Uh, so first, I have introduced myself. Now I'm gonna uh, give you some highlights about what is GDG India doing. So GDG India is one of the biggest uh, GDGs. I mean, there are the total number of chapters are maximum. The second number is in US, and the potential is that one million people, uh, uh, one million plus people are there in India, and you know here it's a hundred million, so potential is good there. Even though here it is also there, so that, that's the kind of thing. It's gonna increase uh, if you're if you're interested in that. So basically, what is AdMob? Uh, okay, has anyone used AdMob in their apps? Okay, no. Okay. Again, nice to see two hands. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is for beginners, so uh, that's fine. Listen, listen. Many people uh, don't understand you. <laughs> okay, don't, don't understand English. It's their problem. Okay. How many? <laughs> How, how many of, are, uh, of you are not understanding English? <laughs> uh, it's, it's better, it's better just, to ask who is... Just be honest. It's better to ask who understands you. Okay, uh, we have a program. Ребята, вы знаете синхронный переводе? Нет. Нет. Все понимают, да? So, uh, you know, uh, you can, if you don't understand me, you can just see this and <laughs> it will be most of the understanding because it's in a very graphical way. So basically, AdMob is an ad network which allows uh, publishers and developers like us to make money out of our apps and as well as for the advertisers to promote their content. So how does it work? Basically, advertisers uh, provide AdMob ads uh, to the AdMob, uh, AdMob network, they pay for it. And uh, uh, this this network relies on us. Then how we show it. So it's it's all about that. And what is the plus point of using AdMob is that it has you know Google is very popular for ads. So in 2012, what happened was that a million of uh, AdWord uh, publishers were asked to provide their ad inventory in AdMob ads. So they came into mobile. You know they knew that the mo mobile is the future. So let's just get mobile. So uh, now you get. A lot of uh, ads, uh, 99 plus percent fill rented, and that's kind of thing you you're not gonna miss any impression of your app. So uh, this is yeah. So how can you monetize? Uh, firstly, you have to integrate the SDK. A lot of you are engineers here, 
and you know that you have to include the library and five lines of code, and you you are up, uh, you run, you run your app and uh, you upload it on the Play Store. Uh, user launches it your app, and at the top or the at the bottom, user sees the app. What happens is if he finds the ad very uh, relevant to his interest, he clicks on it. And uh, when he clicks, uh, it, it takes to a Play Store page or a, or a browser page for which the ad was meant. And then for that period, your app is paused. No impressions are given. So um, you you see the ad if you want to download the app for which the ad was there. Uh, it's okay if you don't. You you go back. Uh, you come back to the previous. I mean, this, in which app? It's, it's your app. So that's, that's the thing. And uh, for each click, you get paid. It's for CPC cost per click. You get paid. And it's not about CP. Uh, I mean, cost per impression. You don't get paid per impression. You get paid per click. And. Uh, uh, as I said in the starting, this is a very good revenue model. First of all, uh, you get to, uh, you know, when your app is free, uh, a lot of users will download it. And uh, if you're, it, it's paid, a uh, lot of users would hesitate to uh, buy it. So if, if you are covering 1,000 downloads with paid app, similarly, or for, with free app, you have no limit. So it's in fun. And uh, with active installs, the ads remain there. You know, if if, if a person buys it, he pays once one dollar. But uh, if it is an active app and ads keep on coming when he uses it, when he uses it, so this is kind of a very good revenue stream which keeps on growing. Uh, let's just see that how does the the reportings work. So, uh, for example, you have. Uh, one lakh twenty thousand ad requests. So these are the requests made in made in your app. Uh, so uh, the ad requests are made and impressions are shown. Usually, uh, this is just an example. Uh, the fill rate is ninety nine plus percent. So uh, for every request, we are guaranteed a uh, almost guaranteed an impression if you are not using mediation of course. But uh, so let's just see that what is the CTR. CTR is that one point five clicks are made out for hundred impressions. So total clicks will be 1500 and CPC, if, if the ads are very good, uh, you get 10 cents per per, uh, per click. So that's good thing. So the total revenue on is an amount would be, or if it is for a week, you get $150. So uh, uh, this is a good model. Yeah, let's just uh, discuss it in a uh, SDK point of view. So uh, how does it work? You know, once you are uh, have an ad view at the bottom or at the top of your ad, of your app, sorry. Uh, so in that ad view, you make a request, and uh, then as you get request the server. So if there is an ad, uh, it, it says that okay, ad is received, and uh, if if the user finds it relevant, he clicks on it. So for that point of uh, period, the app is paused. Uh, if there is no ad, then uh, fail to receive ad uh, method is called, and which causes the uh, uh, the ad the no visibility. And, but but what happens is the refresh rate set by you, which is minimum of 30 seconds. Uh, after that, the ad refreshes and it again comes up and goes again to making a request. Then it it tries again to get the ad, and uh, so fail to receive ad can be for two reasons: either the network is not good. Or the lack of ad inventory. Uh, lack of ad inventory can happen if you are asking for too much ECPM value. So that is all. If you are if you are uh, going by the default way, it's fine. What are the banner formats you can include in your app? So this is the standard banner in most of the app. I just use this and uh, and use the smart banners. So what you see is uh, at the bottom, it's a very small banner. Most of you have Android phones and iOS devices, but it's for Android only. So you will be seeing a 320 to 50 DPI uh, banner at the bottom. Uh, and you can utilize in both phones and tablets. That is and the constant is banner. The, if you are if you are having a specialized app for tablets, then uh, so, for, so this uh, full size banner, uh, it will work for only seven inch tablets and and the leaderboard will work for 10 inch tablets if you try to uh, use a leaderboard for uh, for a seven inch tablet it won't work 
because the, 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 it doesn't have the, the, so much space. So that's where leaderboard are very big ads and very good. What, what are smart banners? Smart banners are the very combined thing of all four. So if you have this ad constant smart banner, it will automatically detect what kind of device the user is using. If he is using a 7 inch tablet, it will automatically show uh, uh, 4, 8, 460 and 60 ad. And if he is using a phone, it will show 320 to 50 by, uh, you know, if, if, if that phone is HDPI, it will show 320 to 50. If that phone is uh, uh, X HDPI, he will show, uh, by X HDPI, I mean uh, the phones with, with the 960 to 540 plus resolution. So it will show two bars on the side, black bars, for image ads. For text ads, it will stretch it completely. One of the other features of smart banners is that uh, when, when your app is rotated, it will automatically detect. So this kind of is a very cool feature. What it does is, Acme Blaster Company has their own image app. Now, uh, image app, as you as you see, when the when the device is rotated, it it cannot stretch the image or it will be blurred. So so it it has the feature that okay, you can add another uh, another ad view. Uh, the advertiser can add, add another ad view when the when the when the view is rotated. It will show a text ad. So text ad is uh, very uh, flexible. Yeah, let's just uh, discuss about mediation. So, uh, the guy is using AdMob. Have you tried mediation? No, okay. ECPM flow. Uh, let's just start with mediation. So what basically mediation is, uh, you know, if you are not getting good uh, returns from your app and uh, you want to, you know, you say that, okay, I'm, the CPC is very low. I'm not earning a lot of money. Uh, but that's market dependent. So you cannot do anything, even the ad mob team cannot do anything about that. But mediation comes in between for your, for your better performance. What it does is, it allows you to add other ad networks side by side for another content. So, for example, I know that AdMob performs very good for USA, but not performs very good for Europe. But TapIt performs very good for Europe. So, what what I will do is uh, the the ads shown in Europe will be from TapIt, and the ads shown in US will be from AdMob. So, you will be getting the maximum ECPM. You, you know that uh, TapIt will pay more you, more to Europe, and AdMob will pay more to you, uh, uh, in US. So similarly, you can add all other networks. There are around 15 partner ad networks and other uh, more you can add by yourself. So, uh, this is this is a graph showing on a technical standpoint. You see that uh, you know. So for example, in, in one month, AdMob was very low, and uh, for another month, AdMob was very high. But we want this technical revenue. Uh, so the yellow network was high in the third month, uh, but you know, uh, so this is the kind of thing mediation provides. Uh, if you see from the previous graph, uh, it is the, uh, I mean, the total sum which provides an optimal CPM to you. So it, it's kind of that thing that, uh, okay, every month you are making more. There is no month that you are going down. This is this is how it works. Uh, like I told, the railroad switcher is the ECPM value we have set. So if you, if you set the ECPM value, uh, uh, you know you, you there's a red train and goes. If, if it says that my ECPM value is higher, it allows it. And if it is a blue train, you say I'm more higher than yellow. I'm more higher than red. So it will allow that and stop red. But if the yellow one is uh, I mean, the less than less than one of them, it won't allow it. It will allow only the maximum money, the maximum money paying rail, rail. Sorry. Uh, let's just uh, see how does it work in an SDK. So uh, you include the SDK in your app, and uh, for mediation, you just need to uh, replace the ad unit ID. Then the same code will be used, and when you when you replace the ad code ID, uh, what so when you replace the ad code ID, uh, what it happens is 
uh, it will make a request to the mediation server instead of the normal admob ad server and it will fetch the order in which you have selected it so order can be of two ways like i told one is by the continent way and the other is uh, by the way of uh, having a higher cpm value so th this is all about that <clears throat> If if you have set a higher CPM value, then it will it will just make a request to the SDK again, uh, mediation request to the SDK. So it adapter what adapter is a translator between the third party SDK and the AdMob SDK. Now you can see that uh, the green ones are the same. I mean, uh, so this one is the AdMob one, where where the where the adapter is inside, and the AdMob. So they are just included into that. So they are into one library and the adapter one and the SDK one, you have to add it yourself in your app. So th this is what happens is that if, if the checks that uh, adapter one has a higher, uh, adapter one checks that SDK one is giving a higher, higher CPM value, it will show an ad after comparing all three. Or if, if you know, if SDK one has higher value, but uh, ad is not available, so it will go to the second highest value and show an ad. Uh, and if you are if you are doing it by the location, then the directly the request is made to the ad network, which which is uh, which you allowed for that location. So for example, adapter two is allowed for US. It won't go to adapter one. It will just directly go to adapter two and then show and and then uh, contact the SDK. The fetch ad process, like we discussed before, will be again followed. And if the, there is a failed uh, failed Add uh, add, but the, the, you have said this add, add, as the country for US ads, so it will just again ask the green adapter to uh, to fetch an ad because it cannot allow other adapters as you have said in your ad of UI. Uh, custom events are similar, but you know uh, only 15 partner sites are there, and if you want another partner site which is new, which guarantees a higher CPM in Russia. So uh, you can create your own adapter. Uh, the custom event code is available on the tutorials. You can just grab that and, and SDK, you can download it from their own site. So you just include the code and it acts as adapter. Uh, if, if, if you are setting it for Russia, you can just set the yellow one for Russia. And house ads are uh, your own ads. Uh, for example, I have two apps across the Play Store. I want to promote one app through the another, another app. So uh, I want my app to be popular in Australia. So I will add, I will uh, do is that uh, house ads I will make available only for Australia. So this is based on the continents, uh, and uh, my app downloads will increase in Australia, but uh, but not not in other parts of the country, not in other parts of the world. Sorry. So that is how this uh, custom events and house ads are there. So after that, uh, if there is an ad. Add, I mean the request is successful. That it is uh, made available in the ad view at the top or the bottom. DFP is uh, anybody knows DFP? Okay, yeah. Double click for publishers is a program where you are directly in link with the advertisers. There is no one in between. Uh, you are very popular. I mean your app is very popular in the Play Store and and. Advertisers like a big company wants to advertise their own product in your app, so they would say that, okay, come come on DFP, I will give you directly, and I will pay you what you are asking for. So, uh, the, uh, there are two types of DFP: DFP for small business and DFP for large business. And it's gonna give a overview of it. It's it's not a another mediation network. It has its own code of implementation. Does the SDK is the same? And uh, here, here you are your own. I mean, you have you can earn how much you want. You can ask for any money uh, from the advertisers. So very good thing. But you need to be very popular, like minimum five to ten million downloads for that. And you know, uh, so with this, the flexibility uh, comes is that uh, the the media features that is blinking ads or any kind of HTML5 ads you require to be shown in your app, very beautiful type of ads. Just you can uh, ask your advertiser to do that and they, they and they are allowed to show anything in your app. So uh, this is, the ad unit ID is also different. And um, uh, yeah, it, it won't follow those smart banners or normal banners. 
it will has its own ad sizes if you are having a space any other place for example in a vertical field in your app and you want to show ads okay you're fine just go with it just create just ask the advertiser to create the ad and you can just release it in your own app app events yeah it also provides that i mean you want to show your apps i mean you want to show your ads when there is an app event made like a pause menu and uh, you you know that okay in a pause menu where users would uh, find the ad more visible so that's how you can uh, ask the advertiser okay just take this have a look at it and let us know where we can have had it whereas in another uh, normal ads you cannot have this so dfp is if you are grown very high with that mob that then you will be asked for dfp so let's just discuss uh, the new ad mob ui what it is all about and how it has improved from before are you using the new ad mob ui <laughs> okay you got the invite you got invite okay yeah i know transfers and upgradations it's a tiring process but it's worth so this is the old ad mob ui you see that you would say okay it's fine it works but let's let's go to the new one and differentiate what you have is uh you have uh the advertisers on the right side reporting and publishers on the left side if you if you are using it for the same app uh i mean you are monetizing the same app as well as promoting it in the play store as an advertiser so you can just uh, get it on the default screen of how it is performing uh which won't which wasn't possible in the previous ui so that is a thing and uh, yeah it it's a, it's a major improvement for those who are doing this so that's why and the, and the other things so uh yeah this this point i have included okay so the major uh, major improvement which which was very useful as that previously uh, when you had mediation you had to change the ad unit you had to create a new uh, app i mean you add a new app in the ad mob ui uh, so you, you can see this uh, this is this is not related to this i guess so what 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 it was this is okay so uh, for mediation you had another uh, another ad unit id if you are going to update your app you have to replace it like uh, updates in a very small uh, uh, amount of time would be very bad for users similarly for ecpm floor uh, you had to create another ad unit id but now what you have is a single ad unit id for all the for all the features so what you see is that this is not visible in a pdf i guess uh, okay where is it okay so you see that uh, the black black circle is downwards and uh, you see that it's not visible right? so here the ad unit id is written and it is everything you can just go into edit mediation add ecpm floor add any other network and the ad unit id will remain the same you don't have to update your apps a lot of time and uh, just uh, yesterday only they announced that uh, the ad mob uh, sdk will be updated to uh, google play services so uh you just have to uh include the sdk and don't worry about any new updates uh bug fixes or new types of ads added so here you can see that uh the, the new ad network you can add in the same as those cs pistols i was just uh, looking at the ad unit id when you when you go into the ad edit mediation part you see new ad net network and in that you can add anything so that is the kind of thing improved then uh, the categories uh, have been a lot improved now you see that in the previous console uh, there were like only 15 to 20 uh, categories and all apps had separate categories which the user said it doesn't works uh, i had settings for uh, image ads off and still image ads are shown so that, that is why they said that okay we, we we don't use it often so now they improved it instead of 15 20 they like added a hell lot uh, 
so if you see uh, these kind of categories they have subcategories and subcategories even have sub subcategories so this will function properly because if you are disallowing a category it will disallow it all across your all i mean all across your app apps apps business so this would this would be more effective because in separate it doesn't work uh, you see that it, this uh, hobbies and leisure has 20 subcategories once you go inside that so you can just uh, you know you wanted to remove gambling but previously you you you, you would have done that if if it, if it didn't have categories subcategories you wouldn't have uh, disallowed all of the hobbies and leisure but you didn't want to gambling so you can just disallow gambling while other other hobbies will be shown and even cooking has like three more subcategories and uh, pets and animals have three more categories so th that's kind of improvement we see in the new ui so uh, i'm just finishing off with this presentation with some of the resources uh, you can just grab the sdk or any other if you want any other uh, any other you know tutorials you can just move into the docs and you can find how to op uh, how to include the sdk then code samples are included for you uh, so if you if you uh, you know start with a code sample uh, it will be very effective you see the ad pop up and you can just include that later that that is better thing instead of just going straight to including it to your app just is that the thing is that example is a better overview of everything so yeah so thank you uh, everyone for listening me now thank you very much for your for your presentation uh, do you have questions a lot of questions i can help. Uh, i have a question have you had a chance to try to sell your applications for money and compare if it works better than uh, when you earn revenue from advertising yeah, I have done that, and uh, trust me, uh, advertisement is a lot better than that. You know, if uh, uh, I would give an example of when I created one my uh, one of my app and I I was selling it, one day it was giving me only uh, one dollar, and the it, uh, for for a paid app one dollar, so I would come for a paid app, whereas for a free app it would come thirty dollars. Did you try to integrate in-app purchases? Uh, in-app purchases. Uh, so what I did was that uh, uh, instead, uh, what I did was uh, instead of an in-app purchase, yeah, I, I I provided the link inside the app for the pro app. Uh, yeah, in-app purchases also works, but I don't have confidence on my work that uh, people would pay for it. I'm very young, you know. I'm like you all, and uh, I'm not a perfect uh, developer. I can have my own issues. I have like uh, app is not perfect and if the user pays he doesn't likes it so i didn't prefer that i should uh, i should get the users pay for it. i should provide it for free that that's what i thought yeah. and what model would you recommend for high quality applications uh, published by major companies providing high quality uh, what kind of apps? Uh, I mean, uh, would you recommend uh, high-quality applications to use Edmob uh, as well, or uh, would it be better for them to sell for money? So, if you are having an application and uh, uh, you you know that uh, you're gonna, so if it is a niche market, you know, lot there are not a lot of users. It would be better to sell that app. But if you know that my app can reach like 10 lakh users. Uh, so, what do you call it here? Hundred thousand users. Ah, that's hundred thousand users, or maybe what do you call it? One million users. So, if if you know that you can reach that level, uh, then you should go with that. Okay. Thanks for your opinion. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. How much is average profit per month, for example, for such advertisement? It depends on your app, you know. If you are having a game, and uh, a user tend to keep on playing it, playing it again and again, so you are like a rich person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand. You was speaking about your own app, like music, something with music, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was with five thousand users, right? Yeah. Okay, how much profit for such application? <laughs> with uh, advertisements, so, of course. So that. Uh, 
uh, it is twenty five dollars per day for that app. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello. Um, uh, while advertising is good for profit, well, a kind of good, um, it can make your uh, app uh, um, uh, frustrating for users. Uh, for example, you are making a simple calculator, a user wants to install it on his Android device and uh, suddenly found that a simple calculator wants to connect to the internet, wants to know all data about the user, and want to uh, drain his battery in uh, one hour. Well, uh, what do you think about uh, these types uh, of cons uh, while you uh, were speaking only about pros of advertisement? Uh, so why you, you, raise, you, you raise your hand when I ask about Android developers because you know a lot of about uh, development. You raise your hand? No? Yes. <laughs> you didn't raise your hand. You know a lot about that. Why did you shy? Okay. Uh, so uh, the thing is that if your idea is very unique, uh, it, it, it's it, it's all about your, your idea. You know, if it is a simple calculator and other person is providing it for free, then the user would hate it. But uh, if you are if you are having a really new kind of game, and the user would uh, okay in the pause menu you are showing an ad, uh, and uh, okay user is fine with that because there is no other competitor for that. So I would say, in that perspective of a marketing person, that uh, not as a GDE, but I would say that go for an idea which is not available. Uh, you got me? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the talk. First, uh, you should try IntelliJ idea. It's really good. Oh, I didn't get him. IntelliJ idea is a re replacement for Eclipse, and it's really good. You should try it if you don't know yet. Yeah. No, uh, no, Eclipse no. is not available in Russia. <laughs> it's not popular. Okay, okay, nice. So actually, it's not. It's not a question. Question: uh, Could you share share your story about you as developer? Yeah. Okay. Starting? Yeah. Sure. So uh, I was in my college days in in the third year, and uh, I knew C++ from high school, and then I was a lot into mobile phones. You know, I used to create skins because in the, in school I can do only that part, uh, create a create a skin in Photoshop, and so kind of a very mobile geek I, w I was from the starting. Uh, I would prefer my mobile phone. Uh, uh, in some, uh, instead of some of my friends, which were not so good, so that is why <laughs> I always s slept with the phone, wake woke, wake wake with the wake with the phone. So uh, what happened was when I knew that Java is here, I I got to learn Java, and you know, okay, uh, the best way to learn anything is with an uh, when you start implementing it. Uh, if if you if, if someone says that I'm an Android developer, everyone would ask what you have developed. Because uh, coding uh, basics you can learn, that's good. But when you are implementing it, you know, know that what what the real deal is while creating it. So th that is how I implemented a app uh, which was like car alloy wheels. And when you shake the phone, the alloy wheels rotated. So I love cars and this bike stuff. So I created that app. I uploaded it on the Play Store, like two to three thousand users in a in a one month period and then second month it was same like 1500 more users so I, I i thought that why not include ads in that app if it is okay with the user i started out uh, with the app uh, with the ads and they were fine at the ads were at the bottom uh, okay so uh, then then you know i said that okay create more apps create uh, create an idea which is not available try not to copy anyone maybe and uh, create something which user would like and would say that okay, I'm okay with the ads because you are giving them something new. So, that is it. Yeah, this was my story. Hey, it's my usual question: uh, What uh, kind of operation system do you use and your friends to 
and watch your attitude uh, to open source at all and do you use uh, open source licenses uh, for your software uh, okay uh, what kind of operating system I use uh, I started off with Windows uh, I love Windows because of the reason that I can play video games on that and <laughs> and and that that is why I I kept a Windows laptop with me. Uh, so maybe that was the kind of um, creativity kind of thing that came into me with by playing video games. Okay, um, one of my apps is Harry Potter's wand, and this kind of when you shake the phone, the wand strikes out uh, force of energy. So maybe that that came from a video game. So uh, I don't know what, what by open source license. I didn't get you. Or open source license. I use Android uh, for Do them. you use open source license for your software? Uh, no. 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 It's proprietary. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the okay. code is proprietary. Thanks, Kunal, for, for your speech. Uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, putting AD to a context. Uh, for example, can I say Google AdMob to uh, show AD about, for example, car? Uh, my app is about cars, and I'd like to show an AD about car, uh, relevant AD. So can I say Google to show it? Yeah, uh, that's what I discussed in the last presentation. Uh, so you have categories uh, with which, so you can just disallow all, and just allow the one with the automation, car and automotive, there is a category and you can just, just allow only this and disallow others. It mm -hmm. will show only ads of cars. So, so just uh, categories. So can I, uh, can, can't I tell Google what I show, uh, for example, uh, article about uh, uh, Dodge, for example. So okay. Not, not, not any text. Huh? It's okay. Okay, uh, ads only of Dodge, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do Dodge manufacturer. Dodge uh, so, yeah. You can do that, but imagine that uh, every time, uh, so your app will be used only in Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if Dodge has a big ad inventory, I mean, for some days they provide ads uh, or some, day they, some days they don't. So in, in those days which they don't, you won't get uh, money to make. So that is the thing. So, so Google decides what to show, but I can just... You can just uh, select a category, but they don't guarantee a fill rate after that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's okay. natural the fill rate will decrease. Uh, it will just show the uh, the ads of that that category, and uh, it would be like cars and automation, 50% fill rate. So that's kind of thing. Yeah, it can do that for you if you want to do that, yeah. Okay, but not for a specific manufacturer, you know, mm -hmm. because they will be having a less amount of ads. After that, there is you. I have one technical question. Uh, do you need to send to send some uh, user-specific information to a, to a mob? Uh, no. Like geolocation or sex? Uh, okay, so uh, I missed out this thing. I mean, Ad AdMob is very good with this thing. Uh, they don't ask uh, users for uh, diverse location. I mean, they don't ask that, okay, give us your proper location or something like that. There, there are just two permissions asked. One is internet, and one th the second one is access network state, which is used for detecting that the data network is available or not. So only two permissions, which users don't take. So you only only can take some of the categories in using your UI, and that's it. Uh, so categories by, by default are all are allowed. Mm -hmm. Only one uh, that 18 plus ads are not allowed. So that, that if you want to, if your app is like users are very high mature, then, then you can allow that. But it is not recommended to allow that. And uh, by default, all categories are allowed to get a maximum fill rate to make more money. Thank you. And another question is, uh, can you tell us a bit about the life of GDG in India? Okay. I, I see a lot of points on the map. Maybe there are like some competitions between them uh, about your life as a, inside the GDG in yeah, India. Sure, sure. Uh, so the thing is that India is a very diverse country and the thing is that uh, information technology or computer science is mostly in the south part of the country. In South India you would go, there are big IT companies, 
and still people want to become an entrepreneur because they know software their parents are in software companies and they are very interested in these kind of thing but in north india the i don't know what business is the most popular so uh, but definitely it is not so uh, the the emphasis is in india is for bangalore for uh, bangalore is a very important city where uh, where a lot of like uh silicon valley companies have their offices and uh, they operate like outsource kind of thing i wouldn't say that <laughs> i shouldn't say that so that's kind of thing they are doing there and uh people are very it literate there they know how to handle softwares they know how to start a company they know all the things so and gdgs are in india have a uh, very uh, good effect uh, in some parts like these parts which are very uh, it it known So th- this is all about that. Yeah. Thank you very much.